Thank you. So today's session will be interactive. Uh, those uh, who wish to switch on their camera, they can do so. I want to keep my slides. I mean, I don't have slides, but I have a few things to share. So I will keep that intro very short and then we can have a Q&A going. And apart from that, uh, I'll share my email address. So if you have any queries later on, you can uh, you know write to me. So I will try to answer those questions by email. So uh, so let's see how many of you have visited our website, devopedia.org. Hands up. You can use the hand icon. OK, Akshay. Yes, you've seen it. OK, good. Only one person. So uh, it's important to get familiar with the website because uh, Harship also has seen it. Because uh, what we are uh, going to talk about is very much relevant to the content that is out there. So that is going to be uh, yeah, the bulk of the discussion. OK, so those who have not seen the site, I'll just uh, share my screen and then show you a couple of pages, how it looks and why is, uh, why is it has been designed in that fashion. So I'm just sharing my screen. Okay. So this is the website here. So this is the home page. Uh, it's not so important. What is important is the article page. So if you go to a particular article, this is an article on test driven development. So some of you might have heard about it. So this article gives a high level introduction to TDD. And it is written in a way that uh, even a beginner who has uh, who's new to this topic will be able to read this and understand it quickly. And uh, to facilitate this, see, first of all, we feel that uh, Developers are always busy. They don't have time to read long articles. So our emphasis is to keep things short and uh, keep it to the point. So with that, you know, we start with a summary and summary has a word limit. Whoever writes the summary must write it within 150 words. So develop whoever comes to this site, they will read the summary first. And summary should be really very crisp to the point and it should give a feel of the topic right away. And only if the reader understands the summary, they get interested in the topic to read further. So writing of the summary is probably one of the most important things in writing this article. Then people can go and read uh, further details on the topic under the discussion section. So which are the main steps? So the whole discussion is organized like a Q and A. Unlike in Wikipedia, in Wikipedia it is organized like section, subsection, heading, subheading. So the whole structure is in Wikipedia is very flexible, but at the same time it is also complex because of that flexibility. So here we simplified it. We keep it very flat and it's a Q&A format. So you can say this is kind of inspired from Stack Overflow and Quora, this Q&A format. And uh, for each answer there is a word limit. Again, developers don't have time, so you have to write in a very crisp uh, to the point manner. And we encourage the use of images to add value to the answer. And not only that, you can also use videos. So some articles uh, we, you can embed videos. Uh, so that's up to the author uh, really. Then there is a section on milestones, which tells us you know, how this particular topic has uh, progressed historically. So this gives us a feel of the topic. Uh, you know, why certain things are done in a certain way or what was before TDD, how people used to develop applications before TDD. So that kind of a context comes into picture here. So this is also quite interesting to read. Not every developer may be interested to read this, but uh, yeah, at least for the author, this is very important uh, because it gives a good grasp on the subject matter. 
some articles uh, because of the nature of the topic uh, they can also have uh, sample code if it's very much programming related yes you know you can have sample code and stuff like that but there are articles which are not necessarily programming related for example uh, i don't know uh, maybe uh, some something amazon s3 or something like that right of course there is code for amazon s3 also there is code to tell you how to connect to s3 how to push files to s3 and so on but yeah there are topics where uh, code is not required uh, i'll tell you one uh, topic where code is probably not thing so there is a topic called pair programming you might have heard this technique uh, in software in software engineering so this is uh, a way of writing code like two people work as a pair to write a piece of code so this is called a pair programming this is one of the kind of agile practices right extreme programming and agile it comes from there so in this example in this article you can see that there is no sample code because this article is uh, yeah it's more software engineering related rather than how to write code so this is an example of that uh, and this is also interesting this article has an example where it shows that you can embed youtube videos also as part of an answer if it's directly relevant to the questions so this is uh, a brief introduction to devopedia so let's uh, go back to tdd as an example so this is uh, what first article we were looking at let's take a look how the same article looks on wikipedia so this is the uh, equivalent article on wikipedia test driven development so like i said in wikipedia it is like this you know flexible structure section subsection and uh, there is a cognitive overload because it takes a little bit of time to find out what you are looking for Um, but no, not to say Wikipedia is uh, uh, not a good design. Uh, it also has serves its purpose. But we have kind of changed some of the things uh, in Wikipedia to make it easier for people to find information. So at this point, uh, let's have some questions. Anyone? so we'll come to the rewards program shortly so you see uh, when it comes to technical writing i want to know first uh, how many of you here are already writers or interested in writing or you have dabbled with technical writing harshit okay rahul that's good uh, okay some more people i uh, i can see it here Harsha Harsha is also interested in writing or has written Abhinav yeah so maybe those who have raised their hands uh, you can kind of go first uh, what kind of writing you are familiar with or what have you done in the past so when it comes to technical writing there is a whole spectrum uh hello sir i would like to go first yeah yeah go ahead Hello everyone. My name is Rahul. So I'm in my currently uh, final year engineering, and uh, I'm a technical writer. Usually, I write about uh, the like tech stacks, mainly such as uh, React. Or uh, recently, I'm writing something about uh, Flutter. So Very things good. like how can you uh, develop, and what are the few changes? like what are the few changes which is like uh, which has happened because as you know there are like lot of changes in flutter okay uh, so i write uh, those things and even i write something about uh, development and how can people effectively use on that okay so okay. that is my domain yeah okay and where Thank do you write uh, can i say that what you write is a blog sort of a blog uh, i usually write on medium Uh, yeah and uh, gigs for gigs okay okay so that is what it is uh, these are kind of blogging platforms yeah yes yeah, yeah yeah uh who else harsha or harshit or uh, somebody else 
Hello, sir. Can I go next? Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Uh, hello, everyone. Myself, Harshit. I'm currently pursuing second year of my engineering. Sir, uh, I uh, like I have a writing experience of three years. Uh, my expertise lies in technical and academic content. Uh, for technical content, I am currently associated with the tutorials point. I write uh, Python, CSS, HTML, and uh, JavaScript uh, blocks for them. Other okay. than that, I recently uh, started something with computer networks with another ed tech company. So okay. it's, it's something that I'm writing from since past 10 months or one year. Oh, um, nice. Looking mm -hmm. forward to have have a like a proper because it's it's something that that's uh, that's a mid of everything because my passion lies in writing and my uh, like my uh, learning lies in coding and all. So it's like okay. my, when my passion meets my profession. So it's it's the perfect combination for me to be in between and work work in it. Sure, sure. Very nice to hear that. Anyone else? Harsha or doesn't uh, matter. Anyone else? Yeah. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, hi, I'm Harsha. I'm not a techie, but I'm learning. I'm a self learner. Uh, I had a blog sometime back where I was uh, writing movie reviews. Uh, in that way, I have writing experience, but not technically. But uh, I'm a self learner. I'm learning on my own. I'm good at researching. Uh, I don't know whether I will fit here or not. Uh, I want to give it a try. OK, OK. So generally, we prefer uh, someone from computer science background or engineering background. Mm -hmm. So otherwise, it will be difficult to understand the concepts itself. But yes, we can give it a go. Yeah, I will give it a okay. try. Uh, yeah. Any simple task. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good at uh, research, as I said earlier. Yeah. So fundamentally, uh, Devopedia is an open platform. All are welcome. Uh, only thing is, you have to follow the author guidelines and our review process. That is sure, the only I thing. Know that. As I have my uh, uh, experience in writing, uh, mm. I'm confident that uh, I will write in a way that the reader will understand. Okay, okay. Also, I'm a self learner. I'm uh, learning uh, programming. I'm learning right. Python. Okay, okay. So I think I can give it a try. Sure, sure. With all your guidance. Yeah. Thank okay. You. So with that uh, brief introduction, I'll uh, tell what, what type of writing is available in the technical domain. See, there is a whole spectrum of uh, content. So at the informal end, it is blogging. What uh, I think Rahul described writing for writing um, on medium or uh, similar channels, geek for geeks. That is what I would call as an informal writing, especially on a blogging platform like Medium. You can write anything you want. Uh, people are not going to question or judge you. Uh, they may give comments, but uh, they may even say you are wrong. But you have the full uh, uh, the control. The control is with you to write anything you want. So and you can express your own opinions. So blogs are often opinionated. So that is uh, and the language that you use in a blog can also be very informal. So that is the flexibility of a blog. It's an informal way of communicating technical information. Today, blogs are only ruling the world because blogging is a very popular form of uh, communicating or sharing information. The other end of the spectrum is a very formal way of writing. So that is what you would find in when you are writing a technical paper, a research paper. And these kind of papers are typically published in technical journals. So examples of these would be IEEE. Uh, they have so many journals. ACM, that is Association of Computing Mission. So they have a number of journals. Uh, so many are related to software or software engineering. So like this, there are many uh, uh, publish publishers who publish technical journals. So that is the more formal uh, way of uh, communicating where uh, the writing itself has to be formal and you have to back everything that you say with citations. And not only that, you may do some original research. For example, somebody was talking about Flutter. Flutter is a tool, but you may say you invented a certain method of working with Flutter or a way of integrating Flutter with some other tools. 
so you can publish something original in these kind of channels so that is also allowed now in between these two ends there are uh, different other types of publications so at one end are uh, white papers and uh, data sheets you no know, those kind of things or technical brochures marketing collateral which convey technical information about a product those are also technical writing uh, so there is a whole spectrum so where does devopedia fit in so i would say devopedia is very close to the formal way of communicating where you write uh, 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 in a formal language but at the same time uh, at the same time you also uh, uh, give citations and references to back what you are saying now the only difference between devopedia and technical journals that i mentioned earlier like ieee or acm is that those journals are published uh, in volumes and issues whereas in devopedia we publish it online that's the first difference obvious difference the other difference is original research can be published in ieee and acm but original research cannot be published on devopedia and there is a reason for it uh, because you are not the going to be the only author of the article so you may start the article uh, as the first author but later on somebody else may come and improve that article they may add an extra question they may add more content or they may replace an earlier image with a better image so for that reason uh, you know uh, uh, for that reason we uh, Uh, it's kind of different from uh, the uh, formal IEEE and ACM uh, way of communicating. Okay, so uh, any questions at this point before we move on? I will show some slides, no doubt, uh, but I wanted it to be interactive. Any questions at this point? so next i will share with you the process of writing uh, and what are the tools that we have from devopedia to help you to write that is what i will share next okay uh, no questions it's interesting okay uh, now we'll get into the process of writing so the writing has two process uh, two steps the first is research and the second is actually writing so when we say you know you are a author for devopedia and you are writing something uh, even if you know the topic very well like somebody said they are learning python assume that he is an expert in python even if he is an expert in python he cannot skip the research step the reason for that is we need we need to give citations to uh, when we write articles so i have st i'm still sharing my screen so i'll show you an example here so in this article uh, just look at the first paragraph right it has only uh, three four sentences uh, and uh, here there is a asterisk and if i click this it goes to number 31 reference and if i go and click this it takes me to another page here from where that particular sentence has been summarized right so why is this important because i will tell you why this is important let's say rahul is going to write for devopedia he has written this article now i am coming on the web through let's say google search i ended up at this article and i am reading this article why should i believe what rahul has written because rahul is not any famous person he is not a well known person in the world of software he may become in future but uh, right now let's assume that he is not very well known and uh, he has written something why should i believe what rahul has written right so the way authors protect their content is to give citation now if i am a reader and i read the sentence and i have a doubt is this really true but the interesting thing is author has given a citation so i can click here go to the actual source and actually verify what author has written is true or not then i get better confidence right that yes now i am having more confidence in what has been written here right so same thing here for this reason tdd is sometimes called test first programming 
somebody may say no no this is wrong this is not correct information but then you can always go to the citation if you go to the citation and uh, open this article you will find actually you can verify whether what has been said here is true or not so this is the power of collaborative writing you are writing not just from original research you are writing based on what others have said so that is why citations are very important so this comes to one of the like uh, tenets uh, of uh, so we have here author guidelines i'll open that right now just to show you so here we have author guidelines and uh, yeah it's divided into sections user roles article life cycle content guidelines so now uh, content guidelines there are three core content guidelines which we have not invented this at devopedia this is directly taken from wikipedia so the three things is neutral point of view which uh, from the phrase itself it's very obvious what it means so i'll give you an example suppose i say uh, in the article let's say i'm writing an article on web browser and i say google is a better browser than uh, firefox or i can say yeah uh, something like that google is a better browser and i write a lot of uh, google chrome rather and i write a lot of statements praising chrome it is a fantastic browser and stuff like that and then i don't say much about firefox right so that is uh, not neutral point of view it is like taking a side you are obviously praising chrome even though it may be a better browser you are not supposed to do that in an article so how will you make it a neutral point of view you can be uh, give facts for example you can say chrome is used by 80% of the web users worldwide whereas firefox is used by only 7% so you state the facts then uh, uh, nobody is going to question it so that is saying adopt a neutral point of view no original research so the reason for this i explained briefly original research you should publish in other places like in archive or in ieee or in maybe even in your own blog you can publish original research that is allowed uh, so uh, on devopedia the reason this is not allowed is remember that anything that you write you should give a citation or a reference to a source which means that the original research is already published somewhere you can then quote it and give citations so that is the logic why original research is not allowed and then verifiability this is from the readers perspective so this is from the author's perspective no original research so when the author is writing they have to base the, uh, their content must be based on something others have written and published in a reputed source this one is from the readers perspective that is when the reader has a doubt on something they can follow the citation and verify the content so these are the three core content guidelines uh, which authors have to follow there is of course lot more details i don't want to cover all this but let's take questions and based on the questions i can focus a little bit more any questions at this point rahul has raised his hand go ahead uh, hello sir sir yeah. i had a question that uh, like can the author have like his opinion ah uh, opinion is not allowed okay fine yeah. sure. you cannot say uh, uh, i like chrome or something like that it has to okay. be based on facts yeah sure uh harshit go ahead uh sir uh, i just wanted to ask that if we are giving citations to other sources then is there anything for like plagiarism because that will be not what you can call a legitimate original content so sir like what how can we tackle that yeah so so the definition of plagiarism is that uh, Uh, you copy many sentences from the source and then you don't give any acknowledgement to the source so you present it or the author presents it as if he has done that work so that is the definition of plagiarism and uh, it is a bad thing so plagiarism is not allowed on devopedia and anyway original research is not allowed so it's kind of uh, 
uh, out of it's not relevant. But then uh, coming back to the point of citation, it is a good question. So citation actually protects you from plagiarism. Because why you are giving credit to the author. So here this paper is written by uh, George and Williams in 2003. And you are mentioning this explicitly with full details with the link. So that means people can actually follow this link and go to the source. And what we are doing as an author is you are stating this fact. And then you are saying this can be verified in this citation. You are not presenting this as if you have coined this phrase. So this is mainly for the verifiability aspect. And secondly, we normally don't copy something verbatim. We paraphrase it. Suppose let's say for this part. Right, this is like uh, maybe 20, 30 words. And if you go and look in this uh, source, you will not find exactly these words because it will be written differently in the source. It may be written in two or three paragraphs in different sections, right? So what we are doing is understanding what is in the source and writing it in our own language. I hope it's clear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And sir, uh, one one more thing, sir. If, uh, for example, we can choose the topic by ourselves. If, if for suppose if we are writing for Devopedia, so can we choose a topic by ourselves, or we will like get allotment of topics, or like how okay. it will be a flow? Yeah, good question. You can choose your topic yourself, right? However, I am going to this page FAQ and help. Here there is a section called requested articles. So we have a huge list of 2000 plus articles. And you can filter it. So let's say you are interested in writing only about Python. You can filter it and find out what are the things on Python that we want to write about, but those articles haven't been written. But even if a topic that you have in mind is not in this list, you can go ahead and write. Right, but it has to be approved by us. Uh, but uh, this re uh, list is just for, uh, for as a suggestion. Now your question is good, but this list, you know, this list is more than 2000 articles are listed here. And in fact, we have in fact narrowed it down. Uh, I think you can still see my screen. I am now showing a smaller list of about 70 articles. So in this year 2023, we want to focus on these articles because we feel that these are like high value, high value in the sense a lot of people are uh, searching for information on these kind of topics. These topics are very hot, very relevant to developers. And there is good value if we can publish these articles. So example usability testing. 12 factor app methodology. Some are old, some are like very new, migrating from monolithic to microservices architecture, low code development, log aggregation, uh, code refactoring for the cloud, right? Application lifecycle management, API security, API gateway, what else? Uh, multitask learning that is uh, related to machine learning. Right, so synthetic data again related to machine learning, service worker, service mesh, cloud computing related, robotic process art automation, reliability metrics, reflective programming, programming paradigms, privacy by design. Right, a lot of people are interested in privacy. Policy as code, which relates to things like smart contracts and blockchain. Right. So a lot of articles we have like shortlisted from the longer list. So we want to focus on these articles in 2023. But that is not to say uh, you can't uh, select anything from outside this list. You have the flexibility. Yeah. Any further questions? Uh, hello, sir. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, what if multiple persons want to write on the same topic? Uh, do you allot it to multiple persons the same topic? No, we don't do that. So that is where the process. See, if you write as a volunteer, then that is uh, possible. 
but now uh, we are talking about a rewards program which is a very select program mm. uh, people are have to apply for it so it is described in this page community outreach mm. so where uh, people will send in their resume to this email and then we will shortlist have a call to understand your background and then you will be selected okay and then under this program per article people are paid 2000 to 4000 and this will the actual payment will depend on the quality of the article quality of the research but minimum you will get 2000 and typically we expect the article to be completed within 4 to 6 weeks okay and these are all we have lot of authors on board but these are kind of the leader boards like govind he has published nine articles harshpreet seven ajit kumar six preena five and so on right so these are the current authors who are quite active on uh, devopedia under the rewards program so they are getting paid for writing and if you go to their profile page so this is one of the interesting things about uh, authors you each author will get their own profile page where they can describe about themselves and this is like a public profile just like people like recruiters uh, they may look at your github profile to know how good a developer you are similarly uh, people can look at your interest or how you are contributing to technical content online by looking at this particular thing right so here for example uh, you know uh, govind he has uh, like he is active and he has earned all these badges bronze badge silver gold right but uh, uh, if you look at uh, somebody else let's say anuradha who is another author so anuradha for example again uh, she has earned some badges and uh, look at the blue badges so this indicates what are the kind of topics in which she has interest on or in which she has expertise so this also gives people a, a quick uh, overview of what kind of areas in that uh, you have interest in or you are an expert in so anuradha for example data algorithms machine learning design web these are her areas of expertise or interest right and then uh, you know more details of her uh, of her recent contributions are also available right so as an author you will get a public profile page which you can showcase in your resume or in other channels in your blog and stuff like that right so uh, so i was i we came here because i was describing the rewards program and uh, you ask the process whether two people will be assigned the same article the answer is no because to start an article there is a clear process so this image here on the screen shows you the process so obviously you create an account log in to devopedia you go to the page you understand the proper process and once you are on the co community outreach page you propose the article title and along with the propo proposal of the title you identify initial set of questions which you want to cover in the article then a moderator will review that and approve once it is approved then you can start your formal research and writing the article and then once it is completed you can inform uh, through chat or by email you can inform us that article is ready for review then the moderator will review the article and you will go back and improve the article so this will go for two cycles that means two iterations are done and after that the reviewer will decide based on the quality of the article how much you should be paid and then the payment will be made so now you are given four weeks to complete an article but if you are not completing in four weeks you can request extension so you will be given an extension of two weeks but this is not a hard and fast rule there are authors who be, who extended three or four times and finally finished it after three months so we are not very particular you can work at your own time so this is the overall process yeah okay oh. thank you sir and normally payment is made within 2 3 days 
after it is published, after the article is published. Thanks. Any further questions? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, for example, like I, I had read something. Uh, let's take uh, I had read something in one of the books and I want to uh, rep, uh, present that in the article uh, without any citations. Is it is that allowed? Why you don't want to put citations? You can put citation no? even if it is a book. It need not be an online source. OK. Yeah, yeah. So there are some cases. See, typically we uh, want online sources because of the uh, thing about verifiability. No, it's easy to verify if it's online. The reader can quickly click click the link and verify it online. But if it is a book and you don't have an equivalent PDF online or there is no source online, then that's fine. You can quote from the book, cite from the book. OK, got it, sir. Thanks. Hello, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Are there any requirements for writing wireless articles like 5G based or wireless communication related topics? Yeah, see there are uh, 5G is a very specialized topic. So the main requirement is that you should have worked on 5G. Otherwise, uh, I will not allow it. Actually, I have done masters in five, uh, this wireless communication. And OK, uh, was based on massive MIMO part. And okay. we had on 5G and 4G as well. And okay. uh, I have come across this Devopedia platform first time because of the sessions you used to organize for 5G. So yeah, yeah, first yeah. based on 5G uh, hybrid ARQ. I yeah, yeah, I remember a, that. Yeah. Also so now question is, uh, are you familiar with the 3GPP specs? How to find yeah. information, how to read the specs and all that? Yeah, uh, we used to design algorithm also is by reading the 3GPP specs. Yeah, and yeah. the about writing articles like we have to uh, do some research. We have to go to article and then we have to come with on or come with the article on a particular topic. So yeah, in coursework, yeah. get such kind of thing like professor used to assign a topic and mm -hmm. we have to refer the research paper and then we have to write a report on that topic. So basically yeah. we were allowed to write any view or something, but we used to understand whatever was in the research paper and we used to present in our understanding way. So, OK, uh, OK, yeah. Since you are familiar with the process 3GP specs and all that, yes, you can write on 5G. We have a huge uh, list of articles. I will share my. Uh, uh, you can see my screen, right? Yes. So I'm opening one doc. So uh, there is this tab 5G. Can you see it? Yes, right. You can see we have listed more than probably more than 100, 100 topics on 5G. Right, so only few about maybe 30 to 40 have been completed, but many more to be written. So there is a huge scope for writing articles on 5G. Yeah. I will be interested to do this. You can yeah. uh, yourself assign me the topics and I can uh, research on it and write an article. Yeah, yeah, sure. Any further questions? Sir, uh, one, one last question. Sir, like after sending you a resume and, and the portfolio, what will be the next step? I will contact you. We'll have an online call. So usually it is not, nothing more than a formality. But uh, yeah, I wanted usually I want to understand uh, the background of the person, their writing experience and then their technical background. Yeah. So just send a mail and then yeah, I will uh, have a, I will uh, arrange. A, I will contact you and arrange for a call. Is that fine? 
अंडरस्टूड हेलो कैन पीपल हियर मी यस सर यू आर ऑल डिप्ट ओके 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 एनी फर्दर क्वेश्चन आई हैव टू मोर पॉइंट्स टू कवर बट बिफोर दैट एनी अदर क्वेश्चन ओके so the two points i want to cover is what's in it for devopedia what's in it for the author now obviously many of you or some of you will authors uh, because you are interested in the financial reward right so that is one aspect of it uh, nothing wrong with that but i will tell you uh, what is the bigger reward for authors the bigger reward is uh, not monetary it is you, uh, that you become an expert in that topic so if you are writing an article on 5g the very process of doing research and writing about it means that uh, you are spending a lot of time and effort uh, and you will definitely learn the topic much more than uh, simply reading it from a blog so that uh, this is i am saying from personal experience i have written so many articles on devopedia and every time i write i learn so much more about the topic and when i finish that article and when and i publish it i get a lot of satisfaction that i have done something useful so that is the reward from from my perspective so that is the real reward for the author so the ability to learn a topic fully okay now what's in it for devopedia uh, obviously we get more content and uh, more contents means more visitors but uh, that is secondary in my opinion we are doing this as a service for developers for the developer community and devopedia itself is run by devopedia foundation which is a non profit uh, and uh, therefore you see that uh, on the site there are no ads the content is very clean the presentation is clean uncluttered unlike many other sites like geek for geek or tutorials point the very time minute you load you will be bombarded with so many ads so we don't do that uh, it is ad free that is one thing and secondly bringing content to the web so what do i mean by bringing content to the web so for this i'll show you one example so let's go back to our original uh, example test driven development so a lot of content is already available on the web if you search for test driven development you will find uh, you know tens and thousands of articles but many of these articles could be from blogs written by other authors now blogs are not the preferred uh, reference because we don't know the authority of the person writing that blog how good is he whether he is saying the right thing so a lot of questions come to mind and uh, uh, in general some blogs are good many blogs are not they present wrong information or they present it in the wrong way and uh, they misrepresent the facts so many issues are there instead of that we prefer uh, articles like this sources like this so let's go to this source see what kind of source it is so this is a uh, ACM publication and it was presented at a conference in 2003 so by nature of these details we know that this particular uh, source is a, has a little bit more repute and then you look at the credentials of the people who have written it right so he is uh, north carolina state university north carolina state so now after looking at these details we have now the confidence that this is a good source for uh, research and this becomes a good for source for writing articles on devopedia so this is the part of the process of research selecting the correct source and one of the uh, real rewards for uh, the developer community is many of the developers uh, they don't have the research uh, background or they don't know how to do research so they may not necessarily come to this paper or they may not have the patience to do research so uh, so well that they 
uh, look at these kind of sources. Usually what developers do, they simply click on the first thing that comes on Google, right? Let's do a search. What is the first thing that comes on Google? Test driven development. So Wikipedia, so they will just go to Wikipedia. They will go to Guru 99, Geeks for Geeks, Browser Stack. So none of these are really good sources for research. Right? Guru 99 is in fact considered as a substandard reference source in Devopedia. Geeks for Geeks, same thing. Browser Stack, I don't know, but uh, now IBM. Now this is a company website. So now there is a greater chance that uh, the information that is presented here has, is a little bit more up to date or uh, more reliable. Still, the author has to take a call. Author has to read the article and then author has to take a call. And then they can also look who are, who are the authors who have written this. So now after reading this, I will say this is allowed, right? This is a good source. So we can allow this as a source for Devopedia. So like this, there are a lot of sources which are like IEEE transactions on software engineering. This is a very good paper, right? So this actually gives a very detailed view of the TDD process. But if you do a Google search, it is very likely that uh, people, uh, normal developers, they will not come across this paper. So they will not understand TDD at a, at, at a kind of depth that we are presenting in Devopedia. So this is the beauty of Devopedia. The article is well researched and this kind of content is brought forward to a way in which becomes easily more easily consumable by developers. So authors are doing the hard work so that the readers have an easy time reading the article and uh, understanding the topic. So like this, there are uh, like somebody earlier mentioned books. There is a huge amount of quality content in those books. It's just that those books are not accessible online. So what do we do? If you have a book, a very good book, you can in fact uh, use that as a source and cite it here. So we want to bring that knowledge which are not on, uh, online, bring it online through Devopedia. So as usual, give the citations. So the model is not very new or unique. This is what Wikipedia has always been doing. We have adopted some of the good things from Wikipedia and we have changed a few things to suit our design. OK, so it's a win win situation both for the developer community as well as for the author. So to summarize, the author learns the topic better and uh, the readers, they get uh, uh, quality information online. So any further questions? I think we can conclude here, but uh, yeah, if you have questions, you can ask. OK, no questions. A uh, few things I just want to share. Okay, First uh, thing is, Herman. yeah, uh, go ahead. Uh, how much, uh, how do you charge for the articles to that? Uh, it is 2000 to 4000 per article based on the quality. And uh, how is that quality judged? Yeah, so the thing is, as I mentioned in the review process. In the review process, two reviews will happen. So for each review, the author will give detailed comments. So let's take an example uh, of a recent article. Let's say antivirus software. So comments will be given here. So you can see here. Second and final review. And then first review. So you can see here, this is the first review I did for this article. And co detailed comments are given and the comments are all numbered. So now the author has to go back and implement all these comments. After doing this, one more review will happen. Second review, obviously less problems, but still many comments are there. So in this case, six comments are there. Then again, the developer uh, author will go back and implement these comments. And then uh, after doing that, 
only two reviews are allowed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, after two reviews, in this example, what the author has done is, I mean, I did a third review, and in the third review, four more comments were done. That means, even after two reviews, the article did not turn out to be to the satisfaction of the reviewer. But now, uh, the uh, author doesn't have a third chance to go and update the article. Two reviews is all they have. Now, based on the final comments of the third review, the uh, reviewer will decide how much to be paid. So if the third review has no comments or very few minor comments, then they will get full 4000. But in the third review, if there are serious comments, then uh, yeah, obviously they will not get paid full. So in this example, the author was paid 3500 because these comments were already made in the earlier reviews. But uh, the author did not implement them. Uh, and how is the payment made? Online, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, do we need to register for all this? Uh, for payment, uh, it is through net uh, NEFT transfer only. We don't do anything else. But to register for the rewards program, uh, you just send an email to this webadmin at devopedia dot com dot org. Sorry. Send uh, your resume to this with your. Uh, uh, yeah, you just say a reward program uh, with your resume. Yeah, send an email to this. Sorry. Yeah. OK, uh, OK. And uh, like, uh, should we need to select other topics? Whatever, you know, being asked that is or... later, yeah, that is later. Uh, mm -hmm. Once you are selected, yeah, then the process is smooth. You can select your topics anytime. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, got it. I have a question, sir. Go ahead, yeah. Uh, do you have any restriction for using uh, any uh, citation? Uh, like as you said, uh, Guru 99, the information there is not so accurate. Yeah, uh, like yeah. so. Do you have any list of websites for uh, not yeah, using? Yeah, but it is, uh, we have a list, uh, but it is not uh, exhaustive list. So uh, in the author guidelines, here, yeah, research tips. This is the current list. Can you see this? Yes. Data Flare, Edu CBA, Edu Reka, Geek Flare, Geeks for Geeks, Guru 99, Java T Point, Journal Dev, Simple Snippets, Dot Tech, Simply Learn, Tech, Vidwan, Tutorials Point, W3 Schools. But all these websites are uh, very popular and uh, many are referring these websites for learning and all those things. Yeah, so the reason it is popular is because of Google search. Oh. Google is bringing it to the fore. But oh. uh, as a researcher, as a quality, I mean, uh, as a researcher and a developer, I know the quality of these uh, places and these websites. Oh. Right, so. Uh, so here there are some pointers how to identify. Uh, these are not bad sources. I would say substandard sources which we want to avoid. Ah, uh, yeah. So what is the thing? Hard to define what are bad sources. Use your discretion. But these are some of the symptoms. Lots of ads and pop-ups. Quality of writing is poor or misleading. Sites adopt ghost writing. Uh, what do I mean by that? They don't give. We don't know who has written it. We don't know the background of the author. Like say, some of the websites, uh, uh, it is contributed from different people, but they don't show who has written it. Right, so we say ghost writing. So it's not possible to verify the, who is the actual author behind the scenes. Right, so we don't know whether the author is a subject matter expert or so that information is not available. Okay. Also, do you have an example? Uh, for the opposite of this, like uh, good resources, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so as a starting point, read the author guidelines. Then the other thing is, go through this video on Devopedia. 
so this is uh, i think one hour or one and a half hour video which gives details of uh, so it will introduce devopedia for new authors to answer your question that same video is there here as slides so you are talking about uh, good resources yeah yeah So some of these things we have covered today, but this is of course very detailed. It talks about the writing process, so it's a very useful thing. Okay, primary sources, research papers, IEEE, ACM, NCIVR, archive, books. Somebody said books, official docs. Suppose you are writing something on Kubernetes or React. So their official docs are primary sources, historical records, standards, 5G standards, Wi-Fi standards, press releases. Suppose you are, you are writing an article on MongoDB. So there is a company behind MongoDB and they might have given a press release. So that is also a primary source. What are secondary sources? Secondary sources are people who read these things and they wrote something about that. Okay, those are secondary sources. So Wikipedia, tech blogs, news articles, tutorials, videos, etc. These are also allowed, right? Nothing wrong with secondary sources. These are the preferred ones. And uh, yeah, sec uh, these are uh, second in line. So good and bad sources. So you can just read it. So you got the idea? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. So go through these slides. I will send the link and the video as well. Thank you, sir. So I think we'll conclude here. It's great having you on the call. And I hope uh, yeah, many people have joined the call. Uh, I hope at least some of you will come on board and start contributing. Sure. And uh, my recommendation or my uh, advice is don't choose a topic just because I don't know, just because uh, randomly you selected it or somebody told you. Choose a topic which is of interest to you, close to your heart. You want to learn that topic. Then you will do justice to the research. Then automatically, you know, it will come. In the quality of the article will turn out to be good. This is what I found in my experience. And when I write, I don't randomly choose a topic. So when I write, I choose a topic which is relevant to my work. Right. So uh, let's say today I'm uh, uh, writing an application where the Spring Boot Java framework is being used. Because it is very relevant to my current developer work, I may select an article or a topic which is related to Spring Boot and start writing about that. So in the early, in the beginning, somebody said they are, he is interested both in writing as well as in development, development work writing code. So especially for those kind of people, pick a topic which is directly relevant to your work. Whether you are a student or you are working in the industry, pick something directly relevant to your work. So then it will add value not just not only for your learning purpose, but also for your uh, in your working environment for your project that is. So that is my final uh, thought on this. Uh, so. So that's it. Have a good weekend. Hope to get an email uh, from all of you. Uh, Arvind, uh, can we write down something like um, uh, how to do this XYZ? Like uh, if I'm from a QA background and uh, I know some quick tricks on uh, you know, how to bring up the browser or uh, how to do some of the setups. How to yeah, make. Generally, uh, so uh, yeah, generally that is not allowed. Uh, what what you say as quick tips and all that that can be part of a longer article. 
suppose somebody said react uh, uh, i don't know uh, see uh, react also not the right thing because too broad a topic but uh-huh. let's say uh, python magic methods okay which is a very so, somewhat narrow thing within python so mm-hmm. when we talk about python magic methods somebody may ask uh, what are the tips or best practices mm-hmm. so as part of that question you can answer it it can't be an article by itself okay okay uh, uh, right. what about uh, setting up a grid setup uh, for any of the existing uh, for any you know, of the framework development something yeah, you know so which those things uh, uh, not uh, really allowed uh, mm-hmm. case by case we can take a look mm-hmm. but those mm-hmm. things we don't really allow because there are lot of sources online which do this okay okay so okay. we feel that there is no need to duplicate that fine right so i am showing one slide here uh huh just hold on not this is coming up Oh, come to the end of this slide. I missed it somewhere. Just hold on. Yes. Anyway, when you go through these slides, it will become obvious. But since you asked that question, I want to. Just see if I can answer it. I don't know. Maybe I removed that slide. Just hold on. Uh, that's fine. I maybe mean, I, I am wrong. Like you know, at the end of the meeting, I'm asking this. No, no, it's okay. Ah, uh, yeah. This is what is exactly what you asked. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Right, this type kind of title is not allowed. Yeah. Rather, you oh. can have an article like this: cross-platform app development frameworks. <laughs> so, as part of this, you can do a comparison, but you can't write an article with this title. Okay. Same thing. This is not allowed. This is not allowed. This is not allowed. Mm-hmm. Got it. Uh, sir, one one question from mind. Uh, sir, if I haven't uh, written any article de- till date, and if I want to start at least from now, uh, and if I'm sending a resume, so what uh, suggestion would you give me in this case? Doesn't matter. Just send me the resume, then we'll okay. look at it. Yeah. The purpose of the resume is just to find out your background. Let's okay. say I want to know whether you are a computer science graduate or engineering graduate. What area you specialized in? Those kind of things I want to know. That is all. Fine, sir. Okay, thanks. Okay. Sir, uh, excuse me, sorry, sir, but one last thing: Can we write programs with like uh, titles, uh, Python, like Python program to return an array or uh, convert a binary numerical to find LCM like that? No, no. <laughs> See the thing is, uh, Devopedia is not a place to teach coding. Oh, it is not about yeah. It is mainly uh, to help people understand concepts. Oh, so sir. what you are asking, how to write, uh, let's say, a for loop in Java, that you will get answer on Stack Overflow. We don't need Devopedia for that. Oh, okay, sir. Right. So we want to complement other websites. We don't want to duplicate what others are doing. So when it comes to coding, there are already plenty of websites. Stack Overflow is doing a good job, and uh, Geeks for Geeks. See, Geeks for Geeks. That is where uh, that kind of a website is very good because Geeks for Geeks is teaching coding, right? How to write code. But uh, Devopedia is not really about code. It is about uh, Helping people understand the concept. So, is it uh, is it more or less like uh, medium? Medium is blog. Yeah, it is. Uh, you can say somewhat like medium, but medium is blog and informal. It can be opinionated. Okay. Here, it is closer to Wikipedia. If you ask me, the closest parallel is Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. 
Fine. So, since somebody asked about coding, I'll give one more example. Show one more example. So, Devopedia, binary search. So, if you read this article, you will understand what I mean by helping people understand the concept. See, binary search, normally people will look for code, right? How to implement binary search in a specific language. But here, the article is not talking about that. It is trying to explain the concept. What is binary search? And what is the uh, motivation for binary search? So if you go to discussion, these are the questions. How can we derive the complexity of binary search? What are the prerequisites? If my array is unsort unsorted, what search should I use? Can I do a three-way search, n research? Can binary search be used for solving an optimization problem? How is binary search related to binary search tree? Should we implement binary search iteratively or recursively? What are the various binary variations of binary search? And so on. So, so many questions are there. But because it is also programming related, some sample code the author has given. And the author has given sample code in three languages, C, C Sharp and Python. Right. So although the article is not about coding per se, because this topic is very close to coding, you can include some sample code just for readers to get a feel of binary search, how to implement it. But primarily the article has a lot of information to understand binary search at a deep level. So this kind of information you will not find in other sites like uh, Geeks for Geeks. It is rare. Mainly they will focus on implementing binary search. They will look at the code and explain the code. But that is not what we are doing here. I hope it's clear. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay, then have a good weekend. Hope to hear from you. Bye.